Hey there YouTube, AJ here. You ever hear that old saying, one step forward, two steps back? Well, sometimes you gotta go backwards to go forwards. Or in this case, downwards? Anyway, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a look at changing out my standard Model A axle, no drop, to my dropped axle that I got at a swap meet a few weeks ago. Uh, lower the front end of the car and um, maybe raise my spirits because I've been feeling a little down lately about my project and uh, I'm hoping a little altitude adjustment will give me an attitude adjustment we'll see anyway let's get started first thing we gotta do is get the uh, swap meet axle cleaned up and ready to go in this thing Let's uh, start getting this ready to go. First thing, we got to get our grill shell out of the way again. We don't want it to be bouncing off the ground like a million times. Pretty simple deinstallation. It's not exactly mounted permanently, so that was no big deal. Now, front end. I still have to deal with these front springs that I'm going to have to cut at some point or make longer clamps to clamp these up. I think that's what I'm leaning towards. I want to make it a longer set of clamps so I, so I can actually add these springs back into the spring pack and use them. So we're not going to do that right now. Uh, what we do need to do is take the shackle nuts off, which I just noticed I never actually put my shackle plates on here. Uh, forgot all about that. I must have stuck those on there uh, just temporary to hold it together and forgot to add my shackle plates back to it. All right, we'll try to remember to do that this time. But in the meantime, let's get these off and out of the way. Because they're going to have to come off, these got to come out. Socket wrench would probably make this go a lot faster. That'll make the job go quicker. I'm going to back those out for now, just to where the end of the castle nut is even with the threads. So we can use a dead blue hammer to kind of get the uh, shackles started out. I've got a feeling they're not going to want to come out super easy because there is some tension on here. All right, those are ready to be pounded on. Before we do that, there is something I wanted to do. I want to write down the height of the uh, frame. So I can see how much drop it actually gives me. Put a piece of tape on there so we can write down the amount. We'll measure it back here too. I don't think it'll change much back here, but we'll do it just for uh, grins, I guess. Nineteen and five sixteenths. That was like nineteen and a quarter. Nineteen and a quarter. Interesting. Frame sitting pretty low. This was like nineteen and three sixteenths. All right, that's done. Now back to getting the weight off this spring. This is going to be interesting because I'm going to try to take this apart without um, completely taking, I guess I could take one end of the tie rod off. I, don't, I really don't want to remove the tie rod if I don't have to. And I am hoping that when this is all done, that I still have enough clearance between my tie rod and my radius rods yeah, that I can still keep my tie rod installed for now. I know eventually I will probably need to bend and lower my control arms, but I'm trying to avoid that right now. I really don't want to have to do that right now. So this is what we're looking at. So you can see how we might have an issue with my tie rod. But before we try to take it apart, we need to 
get the tape off of it and clean out all the holes. I don't know if it matters, but I didn't paint where the surface is made. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It seemed to make sense to me at the time. Ah, oh, come on there. All right, get out my bottle brushes that I've modified for use in a drill. All right, so hopefully those holes are clean enough now that we'll be able to slide the uh, king pins and the perch pins in and out without too much difficulty. I guess we'll see when we get there. I'm going to take the nuts off of the Okay, that's good. I'm popping loose the, uh, I forget what these are called. These are the keys that hold the um, uh, kingpins in alignment. This one's not moving as easy as the other one did. It's moving, just not as easy. There we go. So now our kingpins should be free enough to come out. That's going to be hard to get out of there with that backing plate in there. All right, change of plans. So I can rotate this thing and drop over. I'm going to try to take it, take out the perch pins first. I know, I know, I should be taking off the tires, making this whole thing lighter. I don't know, we'll see. I mean, I put it in there all, all weird, so we'll see if I can take it out all weird. So if there's no kablooey moments. Hey, one's free. Or sort of free. Alright, watch your fingers, Jack. Damn, she's free. Oh, that one that broke it. Well, one side is out. Oh, take off the castle nut. And that perch pin is free, which means that radius rod is free. Means we should be able to slide this around a bit. Yeah. All right, we need some kind of pounding device. All right, here we go. There we go. That one's out. That one's out. That one's free. All right. So our front wheels and axle are separated. All right, we can use something to keep this from rolling. Okay. All right, I know it's not a good idea to pound on steel with steel. I'm gonna put this rubber plug on the end of this and see if I can even get these to try to move. I think I'm gonna have to take the wheels off at minimum because I, I just can't get in to get a good wrong hammer. Jeez. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a good hit on them with the wheels on there. Did that move? I think it did move. Oh, it did. I need my longer, thinner pounding rod. Same concept different device open take this lay it in there wedge it in there hammer we have movement all right so far so good it's a good ways out the only problem is now I wish I had like a wooden dowel I could run down in there 
don't know how much further I can go with this. That seems to be about it. Let's uh, take the same plan of attack over here. You guys are probably screaming at me, just take the thing apart. It's hard for me to just take it apart when I'm having success. Okay, I think that's about as far as it's gonna get with that. All right, now, is it too much just to hope for it to pull out? Oh yeah. So much easier tearing things apart when you don't care if they are damaged. I need to be able to reuse this stuff. There we go. Sweet. Come on, keep coming. Okay, I imagine we're clear of the bushing or the bearing. Gotta be. All right, I'm clear of the pinhole. Uh, Way clean place to put this. All right, that's one. Let's see if we can get the other one. Mm. All right, so this one's causing me problems. This cap is spinning on this one. On the other one, this cap spun the whole thing. Could be because it's in a bind over here. Nope. Shoot. Mm. Ow. That was not good. All right, for those of you that couldn't see what happened there. This one over here pivoted on the tie rod, tire fell over, and then kicked the axle out, and or this axle out, and made it flip flopping. Try to break my leg. Okay, I think what I'm going to try to do is disconnect, take the ball out of the arm here, and get one tie rod out of the way. I don't know how tight I got that on there. Oh, not tight at all. That's good. So now hopefully we can. There it went. All right, so hopefully we should be able to take that tie rod and ball off now. Now this one's a lot more free than it was to move about the cabin. Let's see if we can't wedge this in here someplace we can work on. All right, somehow we got to figure out how to get downward pressure exerted on this thing. I'm gonna have to remove this tire so I can get a straight shot on that. That's the only way I'm gonna do it without damaging the bushings in there. Besides these little nuts, not that. Okay, this is gonna fall out. And I don't want that. Need that whacking stick in a minute. Right. Now we're gonna try this again. See if we can't get it. And that's as far as it'll go that way. And that left the rubber plug in there. All right, we'll get that out. Okay. She's further out than she was. I have no faith in this not spinning, so it's probably just, this is a futile effort. Oh, wait a minute, it is moving. Oh, maybe not so futile. Oh, oh, oh. yes. Get her bearing back on there. Go put that someplace halfway clean. Gotta get her plug out of there before we forget it. Got it? Good. All right, now that we get everything thoroughly tore apart and tore up and no longer have a rolling car, let's hope we can make this thing a roller again. All right, so got some grease, anti-seize, 
hopefully we can get this thing back together without too much trouble famous last words i know but you gotta start someplace right all right so we're going to start by putting the axle on the spring first thing i'm going to do is smear, smear some anti seize on my perch holes and my uh mating surfaces for the uh radius arms it's always good to have anti seize all over everything because this crap doesn't come off of you it's like miserable to get cleaned up from but you know what it's better than parts sticking together when you need to take them apart put a little grease on these i don't know can you put grease and anti-seize together does that make sense i don't know let's uh prepare my shackles the same way this isn't the last time this will get all tore apart uh hopefully it's the last time before i get get it mocked up completely and get my uh locations and mounts made for my radius rods but uh yeah we got our purchase greased up got our shackles greased up so we're going to take and set our axle on these blocks of wood Perch over it. They're not a spring perch. Put our what do you call these things? Radius rods. Drop in perch pen. That's one. Get the other radius rod. Grab a perch pin. That's two. Now we can go ahead and put on our perch pin nut. Do the same thing on this side. I think we're ready to try to get at least one of these in there. Okay, we know you were in there before. You need to go in there. That's in all the way. Right. There's one. While we're thinking about it, let's throw a, uh, what do you call it on there? Shackle plate. And of course it doesn't want to fit. Maybe that's why I didn't put it on before. see if we can do anything about this other side this needs to go this way okay stay right there stay you come over sit there now unfortunately i don't have another shackle plate i can't find it so i'm just gonna put the nuts on here for now It had its weight on there before with no shackle plate, so it'll be fine. Where's our groove? We want a groove thing to go that way. We'll just Close, I can see it. Can't tell for exactly lined up. Huh? 
and it's through. Look at that. All right, now are we able to get this up high enough to get the tire on it? Anybody see where that fifth lug nut went? I'm sure it'll turn up here eventually. One half done. All right, this side's on the ground. Let's see how tricky this is going to be with the tie rod still in position. For a second while we get things prepped. Need a persuader just in case. So, hey, having the tire on actually helps on this side. Remember to line up our pin. Grease lid, that's always good. Right, that looks pretty good. Hopefully, that'll go right into our bearing. Oh, it did. Oh man. Hold on, back up. Why is this cap not going underneath that brake hose? Brake fittings gotta come off. I don't know how I did that before. I don't remember that cap being on top of it, but maybe it was. And it's rounding off to on top of it. I noticed this earlier that this has two of the same wheel cylinders on both sides of the front end here. So on this side, you can see it exits to the front of the spindle. And on this side, it exits to the rear of the spindle. Because this is the same, if you take this piece out, turn it around, Take it out like this, turn it around, put it on the other side. This would now be exiting on the front of the other side. I noticed that, didn't think anything about it. But now I'm trying to get this in here and my uh, cap for the uh, kingpin grease seal is hitting on this and won't go down. I don't know how I got it on there before, but I can't get, this is starting to spin. I can't get this off. I'm going to have to replace one of these cylinders anyway later. Or I, I would just take this off and not worry about it for now, but when I go to rebuild the brakes, fix it then. Which I'm still going to do, but in the meantime, since I can't get this fitting to break free, I'm just going to smash this over. If I just smash this fitting over out of the way for now, I'll be able to get it together. And uh, we'll take care of it when we go to rebuild the brakes. Now we should be able to get stuff lined back up. <sighs> so I loosened up the bolts on the hold the wheel cylinder in and allowed it to sink into the uh, drum a little bit and got it to where my cap can clear. Then I can deal with this mess later, providing I can get this back together. Okay, we are in the guide. Currently, my slot is pretty close. Bearing, some lug caps. Feels like our bearings lined up. Hopefully everything's all lined up there because I don't want to deal with it. Ugh. Now, where did we put that pivot pin? Or the pivot pin, locking pin. Where did we put the locking pin? Finally found it. It was, of course, the last place I looked. And hopefully this is lined up enough to get it in there. 
Oh yeah, went right through. Perfect. Something's going perfect, that's good. Get our nut on her. Straighten our wheels out. And uh, we'll see about sitting this thing back on the ground. You know what, before we do that, let's try to get our tie rod back on. I got a feeling uh, it'll be easier if we can move, at least move at least one of the tires freely. Oh no, we are hitting and hitting hard. Honestly, I was afraid of that. All right, let's drop her back down for now. I'll be honest, guys, part of me knew I probably wasn't going to be able to get my tie ride back on, but I was really kind of hoping I could simply because it allows me to move the car in and out of the garage. Without the tie rod on, it's a much bigger hassle. Let's see if these radius rods will go up any further. And we take some slack out of that. All right, for now, yeah, I'm not gonna get that tie rod back on. The uh, radius rods are too low. I can't clear it. Uh, let's go ahead and measure. See what kind of drop we got. We are basically at uh, 19 and a quarter for all of them, within a 16th either way. Okay, so starting up front here, we're at 16 and a quarter. Mm. This side settled a little more. It started at 16. So, you know, maybe once I bounce it around, they'll both kind of settle out right around that. Let's, uh, see if that settles it any. This side's right at 16. All right, this side's right at 16 now. 18 and three quarter. 18 and three quarter. Up front, we dropped three and a quarter inches. And I was guessing this was three, three and a quarter inch drop on the axle. So that's right there on the money, what I was expecting out of it. So that's good. Lowered the back by a half inch. And that's just from the point I measured it. You know, obviously the point right above the axle probably didn't change at all, uh, or just fractionally. But I measured it about, I don't know, a foot and a half in front of the axle. I don't at a body mount hole that I could get on both sides. It definitely dropped her. She definitely low. Really was hoping I could tie those axle rods together and roll it out and get a good picture all the way around. Let's throw the grill shell back on her, see what she looks like. Especially since that ain't hard to do with my speed mount. I gotta say, looks pretty good. Let's go sit her. I don't know. Maybe I won't channel it now. Maybe I'll leave it a high boy. Because it's definitely a lot nicer with the nose down. It saved me a lot of work. It would also save me a lot of grief. Give me some more space inside. Give me uh, more space for a gas tank. Ah, I don't know, man. I might have to think about this channeling thing. I gotta get it out where I, I gotta get it to where I can roll it out and look at it. I'm, I may decide not to channel it now. My wishbone mounts are gonna be a lot higher now, without having to pie cut them. Okay, I couldn't resist. I at least rolled it straight out from the garage. I didn't try to bring it over into full sunlight because because of how hard it is to steer it without the tie rod. Anyway, I had to bring it out so I could walk around it. I'm walking around it. Getting out here looking at it from the side, I may still want to channel it. I may still want to bring that front corner down to the depth of the frame, leave the back at the height it is, and have a wedge channel going on it. I think I still think that's what I'm gonna do. Not I, I haven't made a decision 100 percent either way, but that's what I'm leaning towards right now. And again, sorry for the dark shots and shadows, but 
I just wanted to get out where I could walk around it at least and still be able to push it back in without too much trouble. So regardless, I definitely like the way it looks with the dropped axle and that front end down low like that. And I gotta say it looks pretty mean. So that's pretty cool. Overall, I'm definitely glad I got the dropped axle and got it on there. Even though it's kind of was a lot of work to backtrack. Okay, well, I won't call it a full success because I was hoping to have my tie rod tied back together so I could push it around a little easier. But it's a pretty successful day. A little trouble, but I did get everything back together. Get it back. I did get it back on four wheels, so that's a that's a win. I need to next heat and bend and drop my steering arms so my tie rod will clear my radius rods so i guess that's the next project i don't know if i'll tackle that before i start tying the body together or after i'm not sure yet but either way so far pretty successful on the dropped axle i like the way it looks glad i bought it glad i took the time to go ahead and put it on so uh I guess that's all for this video and then uh, until the next one where we decide to either start stitching this body back together or dropping those arms later YouTube.